Check it, check it, check it. This is Unique House. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not even know my dad walk on. Man, hey, man, we got a special guest here today, man. Mm. This guy don't need no introduction, <laughs> man. This guy been doing this too. The nigga comfortable in his seat over there oh, too. No, yeah, that sure. nigga done got real comfortable over here. <laughs> the mics and all that, it don't, it ain't new to him. He, you know, he been true to this for a minute now, man. No, my dude. boy, Mr. Hit That, is in the building. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Man, hey, man, say, man, look, man. We go a long ways back, bro. Yeah, but at yeah. the end of the day, man, you know, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God. I got to always start the show exactly. off like that, man. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Man, no doubt. so, you know, uh, I know I'm going to let her get at you. You know, she been she been wanting this interview. This the one she she always was pushing for. Oh, for yeah, sure. she was like, I got to get I got to get him in here. I guess they, she going to take you down that rabbit hole. So this time <laughs> it's going to be like, okay. Uh yeah, uh I'm gonna go on and uh, see where you came from. And yeah, how. yeah, yeah. Because you know, because we know you, but I don't know know you. You know what For I mean. Sure. So sure. I want our all of our audience to learn about you, learn to love you. I want to know where you're from, how you were raised. I want to know everything. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Well, just tell you. You shoot the questions off, and I'm gonna go respond ahead, no. quickly. Like, where we're gonna, were you raised? Come on. We're gonna jump it off first off. You know, I'm a Pleasant Grove baby, six five. Matter thought. of fact, we we in the environment where I grew up. You know right. what I'm saying? Like y'all are literally around the corner from my mom. I used to actually shop at the store, walking to mm. this joint because y'all were like the first people to have a. What was that brand I used to wear all the time? Uh, was it, it was Kooja sour and cream? Was it Kooja? It was it sour and cream? We I mean, was it? We that. had everything, we bro. The Ed Hardy, we I carried think it was, everything. I think it was the Ed Hardy and the Kooja. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I know some other brands. Because I remember it was Kooja, I think but it was. Kooja, I was like, I was literally like going mad crazy over mm -hmm. that Kooja for sure. Yeah, man, I, I I just I didn't get to see you much back then because I was working so much. Yeah. You was always yeah, good. yeah. I I wasn't here back then, uh, and still, you know, still work on the same spot and everything. You know, it's no just doubt. you know, but but you know, time didn't permit me to where I come in here and, and sit down after work and no, talk a little sure. bit. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, you know, just I always used to hear about you because of the song. You know what I mean? When yeah. that song was popping, you was coming over here. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like that song, like y'all y'all played a lot into the the whole entity. I missed to hit that. Yeah. For the simple fact that like it was the jumped out by your boy stay fresh. And yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all had me in that gear, so you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's, that's, so, that's, that's you know, crazy. And you always love to dress. He love to nah, dress. Sure. Always. I was spending my last dollars on some clothes. <laughs> 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 See back then you didn't have to have you didn't have to have money like that. You just had to look like money. Exactly. So I was spending my last little my little paycheck up here just getting me a shirt or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah. Were you yeah. always love to dress even as a baby? You know up? what's so crazy? I grew up in the uh I grew up in, during a time when I wanted to wear throwback jerseys like real, real much, like mm -hmm. bad. But my mom, she was a church going lady. So the only thing she was cool with was button up, button -up shirts. shirts. So luckily enough, when I started to get like in high school, button up shirts was cool. Like the little dress mm -hmm. shirts, Ursha, mm -hmm. uh, Jay Z, that was wearing the big oversized button up shirts. But I used to love clothes. We just couldn't afford them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> How many of y'all were there? It was just me and I had a, I had a big brother. Had a big brother here. Yeah. No, I still, well, I still got a okay, big brother. Okay. So I, I got a big brother. Yeah. Had a, okay. Yeah. Okay. But like my big brother, he he a preacher. So he, he never okay. cared about clothes. He didn't care about that. And you know how sometimes a lot of kids get to wear their big brother clothes mm -hmm. or their big cousin clothes. Yeah. I didn't have that. My, my brother didn't know how to dress. So it was like, <laughs> I got to go get it on my own. <laughs> <laughs> no man, we we definitely been watching your movements mm -hmm. ever since you was a kid, man, and that's what I I mean. Like I said, I was we was talking off air, like you, Taylor, Gabriel, and all the guys that grew up in this area. Nah, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like it's I'm proud to see y'all. Like when I see you at Big T or wherever I would see you at, yep. I know already where you come from, and I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I see how God moving with him. Then to have them boys and have a family. Oh yeah, I'm watching all that. That's you the know? part I was proud of most yeah. of all is to see the family and see you active in your children's life. Oh, yeah, that's the part down, I was most, most proud of. Yeah, yeah. that's cool because you know I grew up I grew up with a father that was like he was the he was the father for everybody on the block. See, yeah. that's what so I was a lot ask. of people didn't have a dad. So yeah. my dad it was like he the one that bought the basketball goal for the that's for the good. block. Dope. Roll the basketball out everybody out from my yard. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no cussing, ain't nothing of that going on. So 
It so you just, had a very good example. Yeah, so and, you know, I grew up in a two parent home. My mom and my dad was married before they even had kids. Yeah, they still married right now. They're going on like what forty? Matter of fact, it's gonna be forty years, forty one years this year. So. Boy, you wow. a statistic, boy. Yeah, let me man. tell you, it's a lot of people sitting in that seat that answer this question that yeah. she ask all the time, and they can't. Yeah. It, she can't. They they don't <laughs> have anomaly. that, bro. They said that's an anomaly. That's that's like it doesn't yeah. happen in a black household. It's hardly. It, yeah. it happen like yeah. that. So it was, she it, grew up like that, though. Yeah. I didn't, but you know, at the end of the day, I, I learned to love uh, you know just the, the the unity that I've seen with her her mother and her father as we yeah. were together and and it, it, it does it, it give you something to stand for it give you something to say hey man we shooting for a goal I gotta be there for my wife and kids man. yeah it's rare it's rare cause you know I, I'm, I'm around so many like street cats you know dancers and all that so it's like it's unfamiliar territory to be like damn your mom and dad is still together mm -hmm. so like when I go to my kids football game my mom and dad both there so they be like y'all mom they cool like yeah, yeah. So it's, it, mm -hmm. it's crazy but it's so it's normal to me so and it's, it's just it yeah That's good. I think I, I, like I said the thing I, I like about you man is that you didn't you know, when I look at the the guys on the song with you and everything else, I'm looking at the, the I, I mean, I don't know where those guys are at, but yeah. I could steadily see your movement and God showing favor in your life to keep you, you know, relevant. Yeah, but you didn't sure. stop. Huh? You, didn't, you didn't stop. You, you didn't know what's get... so well, he transformed. You know what's so right. crazy? I did stop. I stopped for a second because um, like the group broke up. It was like, you know what I'm saying? Pride and, you know, like like jealousy and stuff like that. So it made me stop. And then I went. I went off and had how my, long? I stopped for like probably about like a year, like a year or two. It didn't seem like it was. Yeah, even because that like long. all all the while while I was doing the, the hit there, I was still in school. Mm -hmm. So I was still going to college. Right. I was still working. So like money was like always consistent for me. So I mm -hmm. I, I I don't believe in one hustle. Did you so, get depressed? Were you depressed when it stopped? No, nah, I was kind of. I I was really kind of relieved because I was just spending. I was looking at it like the as much money as I was making. The money was like coming in the front door, but leaving out the garage, because I was had to I had to spend for the image. So I was spending so much money I wasn't saving. So when I did like slow down, got me a regular job, I started to actually save money. I started to see money. I wound up slowing down, had my first son, and then it got complacent. Like it was like, man, this is this is cool, but it's boring. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I just jumped back in the water, just on some like uh, one of the old DJ. Grab me and was like, man, come back, man, just come back and just try this, do this, do this. And then I did it, and it wound up taking off. And then they let me like host an event, a concert, and like didn't nobody know I could talk. But if you would hang around me, right, you know I don't know how to shut my mouth up. So they let me like MC an event, and everybody was like, bro, you good? And mm -hmm. they was like, man, would you would you start going to come back and work? And so it, it took off from that. But before that, when you were I, younger, yeah, growing I want to go back a little bit. What did bit. you want to be? I always wanted to be on radio. I went to Lincoln. I went to Radio Television Magnet. Really? I, I always wanted so to do music, So you always wanted to do that? Yeah, like, I was I was a big influencer to Martin, you know what I'm saying? WZP, yeah, hey. you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And watching, uh, what, what was my guy that he interviewed? It was just one of the best interviews Martin ever did was, uh... Uh, man, stop playing. Uh, uh, Born uh, uh, Born like, Hill. Born <laughs> Hill. You know exactly who you're talking about. I know exactly who you're Because I, I tell somebody that the other day. Uh, it was somebody. I was like, dude, come on, man. It's Hollywood, bro. We were just talking, you know. Because a lot of times yeah. I feel like a lot of niggas be playing that role like that. So that's so true for to be yeah. in that time period. I, I was like, mm -hmm. you, do, you, do you remember that? I don't remember that episode. Man, yeah, that, that, that's, that's crazy. That's one of the classic episodes. I was like, man, that's crazy. And I, I could always like play that back. Like, dang, like that was one of those like, man, that's what I want to do. I want to I wanna be able to interview people. Yeah. And so watching Martin, I was like, man, I wound up going to, I, I went to Sam, I mean, I went to Spruce mm -hmm. for like a day and a half. My mama took me out to school. She was like, nah, you can't go here. Cause I was from the Grove. I had too right, many too friends. Many yeah. friends. She was like, you going. A bad you, influence. And she was like, you going to, you going to Lincoln. And like mm -hmm. a Lincoln wouldn't accept me. So I had to apply for the magnet, got in it at the magnet in Lincoln. I heard magnet schools are really good though. Yeah, it was cool because it's really cool if you if you know what you want. Like some kids don't know what they want to do, mm -hmm. but some kids do. So mm -hmm. if you do know what you want to do and you put them in that lane at an earlier age, it's giving them a push start and a head start. But what's the difference? Okay, you went to school for radio. Radio radio and television. And television. Mm -hmm. Um, but some people don't even go to school for that and just try to jump into the industry. What's the benefit of actually going to school for that? 
just just so you know some vocabulary words, some that's certain it. stuff. That's basically it. That's basically it. Because now you got YouTube University. You can mm-hmm. you can learn anything. So and like even when I graduated and went to college and I did the little radio at the at my college, so I ran that uh, for a little while. That was cool. But if you don't it's all about who you know, when you know, right time and right preparation. To get on at the radio station, you got a better chance of making it to the NBA, NFL, uh, the hockey, and baseball league, all combined. Because you got to think about it. When we grew up, who did we listen to on K104? It was Nanette Lee, Skip Skip, uh, Skip, Skip Murphy. It was them for like, what, 20, 25 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you talking about the, because I'm old. So you go back to Keep Dr. Rock back. and all of them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, nigga, I go all think, the way back. Think about how long you heard Dr. Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, it's long time. They, 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 I hate they to go retire. to work. You, you, you was you wasn't even you was you was just three two Come one on. nigga. And I I remember coming just I've been out it's, here a it, long it, time. It's gonna be man. the same voice because yeah. it's, mm-hmm. it's it's just a, it's just a familiarity to everything. You know what yeah, I'm saying? yeah. Honestly, station changes changes up, and because I've seen people who leave or um, if they leave, they leave them for the promotion. Network change. That's right. They're going to a higher plateau. Mm-hmm. So it's like the eyes, it's like, man, if you're going to get in the game and you get in, you got to just sit back and wait your turn. Right. You better off going to go work out some jumpers every day and try to go make it to the, the NBA, D-League or something. Mm-hmm. We're going to come back to that. I want to I want to go back to just when you first, the the, the, the Mr. Hit That Movement. Started uh, the group. Yeah, the, the, I just want to talk about that because the bo- boogie movement and all that came from that, that whole, mm-hmm. you know, that whole or or The golden but, era. That, that was, was, yeah. That so, was so fun. And, and a lot of people still, like, like Gator Man was on here the other day and he was like, man, they they need to embrace that because we that's the, ball. the foundation. You know what I mean? We dropped the ball. Yeah. So so just tell me a little bit of how you you killed that whole I hated situation, that y'all didn't man. Continue. Yeah. I really but I just want to know how y'all came up with that whole concept. Now you might have told it before, but for the just just because you got younger folks that ain't don't that, understand. No, 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 that's right. Yeah. So let's talk about that. It's, it's crazy. Like before even we talk about it, like like I, I see TikTok videos or I see like Instagram viral videos with me dancing and people be like bro that's you and I'll be like yeah that's crazy like yeah. even my kids now they see it they be like daddy that ain't you <laughs> like cause they old enough to know like they see the video some of the video and I laugh I'll be like that's me yeah it do you like, dance around now no I seen <laughs> you hit it one night at b nigga what on that? my Instagram nigga I seen you nigga I probably one night it. I woke up I said this nigga he just still got <laughs> it still man. Got it. he still got man, it I just be I just be enjoying myself man I really I really stop I stopped with the dancing to a certain extent because I transitioned in the, in the fact that I wanted people to understand the power of my voice yeah mm-hmm. because your voice can't be as big if Oh man, excuse me. That's how y'all know I'm leaving baseball practice with these kids. <laughs> so um, it was just like understanding the fact that it's like, hey man, dancing was a great run, and it can't be duplicated. It just gotta be. It gotta be transformed to the next generation. A lot of people want to relive that that boogie era. We can't. We just gotta embrace it and appreciate the time that we did have while we did it. And it's cool that the young generation is starting their own wave. But let them form their own wave, and we need to embrace that wave because we know what we what we lost because we didn't embrace our wave. We were so busy trying to down our wave that the outside world loved us, but our own people hated us. I kind of agree with you, but I kind of don't. I, me and Bobo Luciano was just talking, and and it, it's, it's something like he like. I was at the store and, and he was like, uh, I, Trap Boy came in and he didn't even know who I was. Yeah. You know, he was like, You don't know, I'm Bobo Luciana, man. I just want to tell you, I like what you're doing. He's like, I don't know you. You know, and it, it was kind of like, Damn, you know, he, he needed to do his research. I'm like, No, nah, we need to be there for our people. Mm-hmm. Like, so so that's why I said, Come I kind of agree, but I don't because your, what you did means so much still to this yeah. day to where we need to get, educate them so they understand but, that they got a foundation. You know that's so crazy, saying. we as the as the as when you're a top dog, if you don't go reach out and hold your hand down and let somebody and pull somebody up that's in a new generation or go show support while you still got that buzz, mm-hmm. it don't it don't carry the same weight because yeah. If you falling off and everybody forgot about you and you running around here talking about man, you don't remember me, you don't man, no. And why should I? 
Yeah, because you're right. Because it's like right. the point is like how how can we how can we show as as the youngsters coming up like how can we show love and when you was on you didn't help us. That's how we look at. That's how I know, man. And but it sucks. But at the same I, time, it's like. I think Dallas is one of the only one. We, we probably could be other cities because I, I don't know about other cities, but I think Dallas we do not we don't show love to our. But Jews. I just can't. No, I they, can't. They but don't. I'm still. I can't. I still don't agree because you got niggas like Mister Hit that that can't really put that umbrella on because he's still relevant to these kids, man. So yeah. it's a because whole different ball game because you still. Yeah. A lot of people you, haven't. Yeah, but he readjusted, so I can't let you get under that umbrella with a lot yeah. of the old niggas that say that. Yeah. You know, you yeah. got some yeah. old niggas that say that because they ain't doing nothing, but. You you still doing something. Yeah, yeah, but, so that's a totally different ballgame. For me, no, I'm for just sure. telling you no, how I feel about hey, it. You, but, you, hold on, you but, are definitely right about that, though. <laughs> but although he kept his, that, he's kept himself relevant, some people don't know him as that older person. They know him as this radio personality. Yeah, they, they don't, don't even know they, him as They that. don't even know. Yeah, I they got don't, it. You know what's so crazy? They don't know that I'm Mr. Hit That the song. Right, they don't know that. I get that, but then you still got the power and the ability to educate them because of the role that you play. Yeah, and see, once I do tell them, they be like, "What?" Yeah, yep, it yep, flips yep. them out. But it's like they know they know they know because you got to think about it. I was under three umbrellas. I was under the oh five, oh six, oh seven, which is the the look wheel umbrella. The uh, the uh, uh, watch me do this. Yeah, and yeah watch me do yeah. that. I come under that era as a as a teenager in high mm-hmm. school. Graduated till we made our own era, which was the boogie era. Then passed on to the next era where we had the yellow beezy trap boys, mo threes, and so on, so on. So I didn't been under three umbrellas of being relevant. So it's dope to keep this wave going on and and watching the new the new generation come along, the new rappers come along and and make that buzz and keep the city afloat. So it's dope. I, I really like like the reason and don't don't think it's strange because I I think I remember having this same conversation with Renetta Spencer. Mm-hmm. It's certain people that can bridge the gap, and you one of them. Just like I told her, oh, you know you know Renetta right? Yeah, yeah. So you guys are in an era to where she was with. The, with Bar Big Mo and all baby. of them, and and now she dealing with, with DJ Cho's Nim. Uh, yeah. uh, she and she's in that air. She's in that lane where she can do that yeah. because y'all seen all of these levels like you just spoke nah, of. Sure. So y'all can speak to each one of them, and other people can't do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? I'm just telling you. I'm looking yeah. at it because I, it's special. These, you know what I mean? Because some of these younger people are gonna look at if like an older person come to them, they're like, "Well, that's your era. Y- y'all don't know nothing about yeah. this new movement." Yeah. And that's what's so, so they crazy. don't listen. And that's and, and that's crazy because the fact that we don't have OGs consistently guiding the youth in a manner where it's not disrespectful because it's it's conversation and the way you communicate with an individual that's going to get the whatever whatever point across mm-hmm. and a lot of old heads can't come at a youngster because they they on top of the world right now first exactly. off they young. Then second of all, they 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 got the fame. They just mm-hmm. don't got the money yet. So without the money, they feel like, shoot, you just trying to get my fame. I don't, I don't even yeah, want you. Yeah, that's a lot of people that think and, like that. But the catch is, they don't understand that it's like, hey man, you can you can get an old crowd and your young crowd and really connect in a bigger platform. But without the lack of proper communication, with Dallas is not executing that. I, I, like I said, I, I guess because I, and I agree a hundred percent, but I also know on this other side, like like I look at the different things, man. When you blessed and you know the power of God, you don't even, like like I I'd have never thought that I'd be talking to a hot boy Wes or whoever. These yeah. niggas call me, hey man, you okay? The seek out the smoothies, yeah. all of these different people that come through that you meet, like no doubt. And and the same thing with you. You dealing with these people. And at the end of the day, you are different than most. You can't get under the umbrella. You are an OG yeah. to a lot of people. And, and and so, therefore, looking at what the other OGs is doing, you can't get caught up in it because you something different, bro. Yeah. That's all I'm saying, bro. Yeah. So I can't play that because I could say the same thing and just bring old niggas on here. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Nah, but I don't. I got 
Kenneth Beanie I'm just left the other night. Yeah. And I'm dancing with C4S in this yeah. song. So you can't, don't play games, nigga. I, I already know that God got me in a situation where I'm dealing yeah. with these people and, and I'm able to talk with them and we able to converse and you even more so better than me because of the way that you was knitted into the whole situation. No doubt, no doubt. And, yeah, I'm on you in here. Yeah. Nah, so, nah, it's, 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 it's def you're definitely right about that, man. Definitely. Hey, man, you ain't saying nothing wrong now. And I love the energy you put out for all these artists, man. I see you when you're dancing and you play their song. Yeah, I see, man. Nigga, I'm watching everything. You know what's so crazy? Like, growing up, like, actually growing up, riding, riding in the car with my pops, listening to music, listening to, like, him through the Spice One era, and then, like, actually listening to, like, you know, like, the Feel of Fresh Boys. You know, that's some real Dallas 80 vibes. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I go, I go back from that era to now where we actually get an opportunity where it's me who get to put on for the culture, like, who done put me so much to the city. And a lot of people, it's a household name. And to be able to give people opportunities and change people's lives, even if it's just, hey, my mom on the radio, just giving that opportunity because... You got to think about it. It wasn't a lot of people that's from the city like this. Actually, not flown in, but really grown from the roots of Dallas, Texas, that's getting the opportunity to be on the radio and play local music. Yeah, no, you different. And and like I said, a lot of the guys I see here, you know, a prophet is without honor in his own country. So no I see all of the people coming in. You know, Vita been on here. J. Cruz been on here. Yeah. Uh, uh, all of the people, only one that really was, uh, Taze, Taze Alexa, mm -hmm. she from here. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But, but it's certain, yeah, certain ones sure. that are from here, but you see the ones that are are, are are really elevating and thriving here, you know, that are not from here. And you and then you see the ones that are organic, yeah. like yourself. And and I believe me, I'm watching it. I see everything. Like I said, I go back to Dr. Rock, bro. I went to Players Club, uh, RJ by the lake. I'm a real nigga that yeah. I've been in them streets, nigga. Like, yeah, that's what, like before that's all, a real OG, OG environment. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> all that. So yeah. the owner know the own, knew the owners, you know, and stuff like that. So yeah. and, and, and hustled in them hoes. So I I'm a different type dude, and I know. And so when niggas see me sitting here, it messed their head. I'm like, who is that nigga, man? How that nigga gonna just say that nigga? I said it proudly. It's hard to deal with me. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't know what you're dealing with. You're yeah. like, oh, oh, he know him. How he know him? Yeah, yeah nigga, he know everybody. Hey, that, be, that, be, that be the code, that be the coldest uh, cheat code for individuals when you when you tapped in in so many different environments that it's like, hey, man, once a person check his resume, I'm like, dang, how didn't he know? He know, damn. Damn, so I, I probably can't whip the wool over him. Cause see, it's, he know too many people. Like he, he already know the game, that, and that be the gift and the curse. Some yeah. people, some, some people, people don't they don't want to deal with you no, now. Cause not like, at all. damn, I can't even work my jelly on him no more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God damn, they didn't, they didn't already sprayed strawberry jelly all over his bread. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He already know. You know what I'm saying? He don't yeah. need no more jam on it. Mm -hmm. So you know that, that what come with the game too, though. Now, so how but do you, how can we ahead. bring Dallas together? I, I know because say... I know that okay. They call you the mayor of Dallas. Yeah, for sure. So since you're the mayor, you're supposed to bring it together. Hey, How can we do that? You know what's so crazy? I have this talk all the time, like just barbershop talks or people just shopping in the mall or whatever. And I and, and it sucks because, man, I was like I was like I was like one of the few guys that could actually co mingle on both sides mm -hmm. of a lot of different scenarios, not just the scenario everybody knows. It's right. just like it, in a lot of different cases. Like as far as I could be with the street guys, I can be with the, the swipers and the finessers, the robbers and the nine to fives, and I could be with everybody. Yep. And, and, and I don't got to turn into a chameleon. I could just be me, mm -hmm. and they're going to accept me from just my whole livelihood. So when when I say that, my only solution is somebody from Dallas that's actually from the D has to get financially wealthy in a position to control the market. Yeah. Until that happens, the Dallas can't be controlled because we 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 run under the wild wild west laws. Whoever 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 whoever's hot and rolling, they rolling with that camp. And if that camp can't benefit nobody else, then shit they're gonna try to form their own camp over there, and they gonna go against whatever. I seen it with the Dallas the Dallas boogie scene. We was all partners. Everybody was partners. Paper chasers, uh, T Wheel and uh, uh, Nature Walk. Uh, Trelly Prince Rick with the hit that uh, head beating him with the uh, whole CSB movement. Everybody was partners. Everybody was having fun. So they started saying, "Hey man, we hey we couldn't checks. Now it's a competition. Mm -hmm. We ain't we ain't one big group. When we kicked it for two years, no problems. Matter of fact, we fought together. 
Like every like everybody was beautiful. We got pictures of everybody vibed out strong. Be him. Be him. Every, him. Uh, GS boys. Uh, Fat pimp. He was he he go back that far. Come on. Yeah, yeah, Fat right there. Pimp. Come on. We we talking uh party boys. I'm party talking about boys, yeah. Any, and you gotta think about party boys is like the City Hill Lancaster side. Yeah, yeah. You got paper chasers, Oak Cliff, you got uh C S B Grove side, you got Trail and Rick, the other side of Grove, East Dallas. You had all uh B Hemp over there in Arlington, the Arlington side. Mm -hmm. Everybody was cool. Everybody kicked it had a blast. Until they cut that first check. Oh, man. Money it's, is the root of all evil. Come on, the man. The love of money is the root of all evil. Come on, man. They started cutting checks. So now it's like, hey, bro. Hey, man. We got to kind of like get away from them because we don't want them to take our way. Man. Mm -hmm. Hey, man. But we ain't have nobody who had a bankroll who, who could control us. Like, hey, everybody finna get a chance. Everybody to, finna eat. Everybody finna eat. Y'all just all keep riding off each other waves. Hey, when he get booked here, you bring them under you. Boom, boom, boom. So now when they see them, y'all get high. Y'all get it wasn't no structure because who would have thought that we was actually gonna be getting this type of money actually blowing up because we never seen it from Dallas. And you see, that's how people always talk about Atlanta. That's why they always compare in Atlanta. Like, how can Atlanta do that? Why can't we do this? But they I'm got the big dog. I'm going to give you an example. Atlanta really don't do it. The catch is, they make it so star-studded in their own entity that the people looking in think it's bigger than what it really is. They beef that too. It's just the, the difference between them. They keep their business intact like this. Mm. The only business that we didn't just heard about is real crazy is the, the Young Thug situation and Wife mm -hmm. and Lucci. Mm -hmm. All the other stuff is is in-house. In-house. You know what I'm saying? With our stuff, it was in-house, but it, it just erupted to the internet and the internet started giving up all the game and exposing that. If, if people didn't know that that was going on, Dallas was on top of the world. Okay, okay. And and, and I definitely uh, know you You was in the midst of it. You lived it. Um, yeah. When you when it come down to um like the music, let's let's move up a little bit. I wanna I talk one, about one question about um the group before you move on. Um if you had to because I know a lot of people still creating groups and trying to do their own thing or whatever. No doubt. If you had to look back on the group and the things you know now, is there a way you could have Oh yeah. <laughs> what do you oh, think? Definitely. Like advise some of these people that are doing that not to make the same mistakes that you did and, you and how it can be a successful group. When you're dealing with a group, you got to put personal feelings behind. I mean, you can, everybody going to have feelings and everybody going to be personal because you're dealing with humans. Mm -hmm. However, you can't put your feelings over the business. And I wish I could have, I, I wish I would have had enough sense because I had too much pride too. I ain't going to lie. Mm -hmm. So, it was some things that was done to me that I was like, hey, look, I ain't, hey, I, I never let y'all play with me like that, like ever. So instead of me just saying, you know what, hey, y'all tried it. Hey, let's get through it. Hey, I ain't no stage without them, and y'all don't got no stage without me. Right. So we all need each other. We all want entity because the, the world grew to love the group more so than just me or mm -hmm. just them. So... I wish I would have had enough sense because we had a talk. Like, we literally had, like, a powwow, like, a real sit down, like, hey, bro, what we going to do, y'all, is we going we gonna to make it work or we not? And we was like, all right, big, boom, we're going to make it work. After we already fell out before. Mm -hmm. And then after we fell out again, you know what I'm saying, somebody got in their feelings again. And I was like, man, I can't keep playing with y'all like this. I go, I can go do my own thing or I can go get a job because – I was still in college mm -hmm. and I was just used to making money. I was, my whole life was, I was a worker. Like my parents didn't teach me how to be a boss. They taught me how to be a worker and that sucks. So now I learned from that where now I teach my kids, hey man, y'all got to learn how to be your own entity. Think about it. Uh, uh, it makes so much sense. That's why this story. When you was coming here, when you were little, my kids were small. They grew up in this store. They Come 15 on. and 16 and 14. This store been here 15 years, going on 16. Well, 
going on 15. All they know but is that boss. That, that's all they know. And that was the reason I did it was mm-hmm. so they could grow up here. They grew up here. That's their little alls over there or something, but they go, they know the hustle. They ain't playing no games with that. And they know the other way as well because we we, we do it's everything. Work ethic. But right. but the thing is, man, you, you 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 said a mouthful when you said that, you know, to show them how to be entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and, and, and how to move no, in this society sure. is important, right? Um, like I said, I, can we go ahead? Okay, I want to go up to the uh, the fact of the, the Mo Three thing because I know Mo Three was your guy. Um, for sure. I know Trap your guy. For I know sure. uh, Shoot Yellow your guy. All of them. For sure. Y'all y'all <laughs> all around the same age too. To be honest with you, no doubt. Um, just uh, just give me the spiel on uh, just Mo Three. How you and him met? How you and him? Because y'all had to grow up around the same era. Some of the same things were going yeah. on. Let me know how it was when you first heard some of his music. Man, I, I still remember it like it's yesterday because it's crazy. It always play back in my mind on just like random. Like if you just hear a song, I'd be like, dang. It's just it's, like you can hear a song be rapping and I'd be like, dang, bro, gone. And it's like you can't come back. It's, mm-hmm. it's crazy. But I remember Rain blowing my phone up like, hey, bro, like, hey, bro, I got an artist. I got an artist. And I was like, well, at that time, you know, me and Rain is like, we close. You and Rain? Me and Rain, that's my guy. Are you serious? So you, how long you've known Rain before you knew Mo3? I've been knowing Rain since, like, you Ra- think, Rain is I, funny I, as hell, hey, dude. Look, I'm, I'm <laughs> Has a, he always been like that? I'm finna tell you this. this Bro, is, y'all, wow. Is that your homeboy? I'm talking about, I'm, 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 finna, Rain. I'm, finna, tell, I'm finna tell y'all, I'm, 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 I'm Rain, I'm Rain, I've been knowing Rain since he was a rapper. Damn. Rain was a rapper. That's a long time, we know. Ryan was he a tell rapper. Us he told us his story. Know what I'm saying? And he was decent, but he just didn't like his voice. And he thought he was like Pimp C. Like, <laughs> like, 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 like. <laughs> no, listen, man. Rain is something else. He give me some crazy calls. Hey, but I, I'm finna tell y'all the craziest thing with Rain. And I'm and, and Rain had at least thirty percent to probably even more. I'm just I'm just being modest, super modest to with the growth of the whole Dallas Boogie era. I don't think it would have been a big, uh, as big of a boogie era without Rainwater. Why? Rainwater was the only individual that would get on the road and go to all the colleges and get us booked. Hmm. You can't, you cannot go and ask any local artist that had a boogie song. I'm talking, and I can name them: the the Paper Chasers, uh, um, um, what what was his name? T Wheels and uh, his his brother, um, uh, a B Ham. Yeah. The party boys, uh, even the it was anybody GS that the GS anybody that was local. Only, only reason I, I I wouldn't put the GS boys in there because that was already they already, they had, already a had a deal. You know what I'm saying? And be those two already had a deal. Yeah, but anybody else, you wasn't getting booked unless Rain was calling you because Rain was the one out there hustling, trying to make his ten percent or five percent. But mm-hmm. back then, we didn't know that. Booker, like people that book shows, get that type of money. We thought we were supposed to get all the money. That's the only reason the world started calling Rain Janky. Really? Because Rain was t- putting a booking fee on it. Because Rain went to Houston and learned that that's what you see, that's how you're supposed to do it. That's business. You're right. But in Dallas, but artists didn't know that. We didn't know that. So now when they finding out. Dang, Rain charged them two thousand, but he only gave us eight hundred. Because hey, hey, how much you want for a show? Shoot, man, just give me a thousand. I got eight hundred for you. All right, let's do it. And then if Rain go get two thousand. You wouldn't have made your thousand without Rain. That's right. Mm-hmm. Driving this little raggedy Honda, a O two green Honda, around <laughs> the world, man. I used to ride man, in that car. More and more, I'm I hear about this rainwater is something else. Hey, hey, you know what's so crazy? I sit back and laugh because I really was a witness. Of it, I seen it firsthand. He a born hustler. He was the only one that literally got on the road to go to the colleges and get the DJs to play the music. The, the first club, uh, like city and college that we took over was Navarro. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a DJ, DJ Lil Lex. And at that time, it was Definition DJs. DJ Lil Lex was the only one that was like doing the high school parties and he started doing college parties because we got older. That's crazy. So when Lex started doing the clubs, we had Young Black that was like making all the noise. This before Paper Chasers and Young Black even made Frankie. Young Black had the buzz and he had the uh, Richmond records behind him. But Lex was their DJ. 
Rain or go service all the new music, get it hot because all he had to do was just go go to search whatever song was big, get that song, go take it to the DJs, get the song hot, and then at that time it wasn't no social media. It was just picking on the phone and calling something. No, no was, going. You had to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just like set delivering the CD. You everything had, was mobile. You had to be there. Yeah. So at that time. All the people from the country towns, Tyler, Waco, Mount Pleasant, Mount Vernon, um, Oklahoma, uh, Louisiana, you have to drive all, all the way the to way. Dallas, Texas wow. to come to Cirque, 2,500 people, or Sunday at uh, Level 5, or Saturday at Club Shay. You had to come and see it, and you would go take it back, because it wasn't no social media platforms right. for you to hear it. You only had to be the word of mouth. Hey, this is the biggest song out of Dallas. This is the biggest song out of Dallas. And then you got a dude. That's literally coming down her service. I'm saying I can get these artists. I can uh, do this. That nigga there doing this, did his thing, and 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 that's that's what make Rain different. You know, I always ever since I met him, he's a hilarious guy. Dude. Man, he hell. He make me laugh. <laughs> yeah, bro. And, I, and the nigga done got good at interviewing. This nigga hero. This hey, is a, nigga. This nigga's talented. Hey, I'm finna, take, <laughs> I'm finna fuck you. Up. Rain can talk for shit. <laughs> <laughs> so like, all right, the first big. <laughs> this is no cap. The first big show, one of Rain's biggest shows ever, the first big show, um, some people in Hawaii called me, and they was like, hey, we want to bring all the Dallas people. So I didn't want to do all the conversations because I had a job. I didn't have time to be all on the phone. I, but I know Rain, I'll do it. And I was like, Rain, you can't talk to them folks like that, man. This how y'all talk to you. So I literally had to coach Rain how to talk to these folks. And then we booked we booked the Party Boys. We booked the GS Boys. We booked B-Hemp. We book uh, Young Black, me, uh, DJ, uh, uh, Mr. Rogers, to to do the whole thing, and we took over the whole Hawaii trip. Damn! And I had rainwater set it all up. That's dope, man. Like I said, I didn't. You telling me things that yeah, I didn't. It's crazy. I didn't even know. Like it's crazy. The one thing I can say, man, is just it's crazy the fact that the way you know things come full circle, you know, and 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 that's the one thing about work ethic, you know, the dude. He consistently in he in something at all times, man. And I don't think, agree with some of the shit he man, be doing, I, though. Hey, hey, I know you don't, but you can't agree with <laughs> but, everything. But 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 that's hey, that's the a, that, nigga that, is that's, a marketing genius. Now he, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I sit back, I and I talk to bro all the time. I'll be like, bro, you is tripping, bro. Like you tripping, <laughs> like like I don't even some some shit he do. I'll be like, bro, what the. F- like, I, I won't even say it on the mic. This nigga uh, crazy, man. man. I'll be like, bro, but at the end of the day, I. I, I don't I, I just don't agree with some of the stuff he do because like like Rain is like a real partner to me like you know what I, I'm saying like I, I want to get on the Mo three thing though because Rain I didn't know that he was that had that much influence because all you seen was Mo three in the right. kitchen I didn't even get to answer the question yeah. I'm my bad Let's so get to it. <laughs> Rain called me and say hey man I got an artist and I'm like all right what up fool this nigga called me back again I got an art bro I got an artist hey hit that fool I'm gonna pay you to come to the studio and that's when I learned damn like fool like niggas are literally paid for my ear just to see what it is so I get in there you know what I'm saying this little short little stumpy little matter of fact he's skinny he ain't even fat he's skinny I'm talking about nigga muscle shirt loose in the motherfucker like, like, <laughs> size 2 X gym shorts on some fucking slides I'm like I'm like, Ryan, you got me in here looking for this nigga? Because at this time, rappers, you had Trap Boy, Designer, Lil Cuban Link, yeah, Watch. Yeah. So uh, I'm like, uh, Yellow. So I'm, I'm, so I'm like, I'm like, bro, this nigga don't look like no fucking rapper, bro. He, bro, he broke. <laughs> like, bro, ain't nothing he can say on this mic to make me just go, all right, bro, he hard. So, boom, it's probably about 8 o'clock. It's just, now nah, it's probably like 7 o'clock. It's just getting dark. We didn't leave that motherfucking studio about like probably about five, six in the morning. That little guy started fucking rapping, bro. And I was like, "Yep, he the next one." And I and we did shots reloaded. Damn, we did shots reloaded. I hosted the mixtape. That was the first, and and I was in there with him like, "All right, three. I know you can rap about guns and shit, but switch it up." And then he was like, "Man, that shit hard." I was like, "Man, that shit ain't hard enough, bro." And that shit was making him so mad. He was getting that bitch and going harder. And, I, and Rain was like, "Woo!" Like, <laughs> like oh, I know how to do it now. I just just piss him off. Just keep making him matter. Just make him matter. And he just, man. So since man three was man, he was a legend, bro. I, I like it because you know, uh, like I said, uh, three 
I didn't really, I was a, I'm going to be honest with you, before they even was having any issues and all that, I was with yelling them because of the designer. Yeah. Young nigga trapping designer. Yeah. I'm a nigga that sell clothes. It makes sense when you think about it. Then I'm a hustler. Yeah. So I'm like, this nigga here marketable. Yeah. The first time I hear about Mo3, the nigga, he, he jumping on a mixtape guy or something. Uh, uh, something crazy, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then he over the, the here. Shit with, the CJ was shit with uh, D Real. D Real. And then the next time I hear he beating up somebody on Facebook, I told Rain, <laughs> what I'm like, no, nah, nigga, that nigga is not the one I need to be dealing with. I'm trying to get this, I'm looking at the city going. I'm like, this nigga yellow, though. This nigga here, he marketable. You know, the nigga ain't all, he all, he ain't all that, but he gonna be, you know, he marketable. That's what I was looking at. Yeah. From a financial standpoint and a hustler, I'm looking at this can go. I, my brother called me about this dude, man. He kept he calling me about Mo3. I'm like, man, why you keep calling about this nigga? He like, man, you heard that church song? Yo, I'm like, I don't know nothing about it. I don't, that nigga kept calling. Then I started listening. I said, this damn nigga right here, that nigga, that that nigga got something. You're you know what's so crazy? And this, and this is what I tell people all the time, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like like three was, he, he, he was just, he is just in a whole class of his own. But I didn't hear like all the trap boy in their music, you know what I'm saying? I done heard all the yellow music. They got the same capabilities to be as powerful. It's just I don't know if they they scared to put that type of music out, or but they got the same. They got it in them too. I don't know what it's gonna take to get it out them because to me, trap boy, when you rapping about trap shit, bar for bar. Ain't nobody fucking with that man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people say they don't like the way trap rap. I be like, bro, when he talking about trap, when he talking about, when he talking about that lifestyle, hey man, you can't fuck with that boy. Let me tell you something. I go on the record to say this: the hardest uh, nigga on that uh, uh, that's on me a remix with Trap Boy Freddie. Say man. He had a cold you ass. That's what I just said, dude. Ain't, ain't, ain't. I think it's the right song, the right beat, and you in trouble. It's just only thing is, I feel like Trap don't have the the complete team around him to to bring it out. Because all right, when they did, he don't the, trust nobody. I don't think he give a damn to even trust. Now nah, you That's care. The thing. I think I think you you gotta care because you you know you know for a fact that you know this shit this shit make millions. Mm. So I know he care. I yeah. know I just know he care. Right team that he trusts that's the problem it's just man it's it's a it's about the system dog and in the city is lacking the system to keep to elevate our city in a in a, in a bigger light like all right for instance erica banks goes to a houston program and turns into one of the biggest tiktok songs and and, right. and, and boy for boy female rapping lyrically she's one of the best bro i picked her I, I text her. I got the text, nigga. I'm, before, it, I'm talking before all of the... Because I seen it. I'm finna tell you what's so crazy. And I tripped out off of it. Nigga, call, call my phone. Hey, man, I'm, I'm thinking about signing her, bro. But if you say I shouldn't, I won't. I said, man, she's the best female artist out of Dallas. Signed the proof. She gone. Before that, even before she went to uh, to to, no, to, to I, half paint, I, I my son showed her to me, and I was like, "Man, that girl can that. rap, nigga." Right. I knew it, bro. When she was stripping and rapping, I was like, "Bro, you cold," because you got to think about it. It was like it's like three or four like strippers that turned rappers that mm -hmm. got Sensei Molly. Yeah, mm -hmm. when she was dancing, she was like, hey, "I'm a rap." Like I was literally was like, we went out of town. We went out of town to go make some money, and I and I'm listening to the music in the car. I'm like, man, you tripping? You need to focus on this. Yeah, like you got it. You got shout it. out to Sensei Molly, man. What, what did somebody say? LeBrook was here last night. I was about yeah. to say, what did somebody say about um, rapping and stripping that it's just not a good look? It's not uh, a good no, look if you can't that, rap. I can't say who said That's that. That's why I said somebody said that. Yeah, but at the end of the day, I think the hustle is real. I respect the hustle. I don't give a damn it's what you got to do. You so better you make agree it. that it's not a good look? I ain't no, saying no, it's I, not a good I, look. I don't, I don't, ain't nothing not a good look because if it work, it work. Okay. I can't I can't dictate what works for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I think the hustle is real. Yeah, for sure. I tell my, I, I, I tell my kids all the time, I'll be like, man, you can't go look at your partner and what your partner got going on and expect it to, to work for you. 
Cause she, she, his parents might not fuss at him for for acting up or doing something, so he ain't got to deal with these consequences. But you do, yeah. So you gotta always, you gotta put that in everyday lifestyle. Like, hey, I don't know what might work for you, because yeah. I don't know your financials. You might got a strip. Your lights might. That's be cut what out. I was talking about, and, and that's, that's cool. exactly what I said. I said that the fact that you gotta, because rapping takes money. Man, you gotta finance rap it somewhere take, or the other. Rap take real. Pa- I just told you when to to keep up that that whole hit that image. I was literally balling broke all the time. Oh, you was coming here and spending money. Man, come on. <laughs> I was balling broke. Because I used to hear it from her. She say, he came up the other day. He got man, a shirt. Man, that Coogee, man. That Coogee wasn't. <laughs> that was that expensive. Wasn't cheap. It was Coogee, Crown Holder, Mazzano. I remember. I remember. Man, that come on, remember. man. I, I, I see the pictures. And my mama That's used to. exactly what My was. mama used to tear a, a, a mud hole through me like. Boy, you just keep buying clothes and you gotta buy shoes. And I was going over to the DK with Miss Lisa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, back then. Yeah, she had the red hair. I was under the old law. You know, yeah. you couldn't get the new J's unless you bought the outfit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you, you wasn't no raffles. It was like if you ain't buying a whole unit, because we selling the clothes too now. Yeah. You can't just get these shoes. So you gotta go get the shorts, the shirt, the jacket. And we're going to give you the shoes right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I came under that law. Yeah. So a pair of Jordans, 150. The jacket was like 80. The shorts was like yeah. 50. The that crown was holder 40. was hidden, wasn't it? I'm in a crown holder, 350. That crown holder, was, I so know we, the niggas who were doing that. Man, yeah. we were crown holder at concerts. Jeezy come, we in crown holder. Yeah. Black label. Or 8732. I, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Come on. It was, yeah. I was going broke. I had all them accounts here at this store. That's crazy. I was going broke. Yeah. And people don't be understanding, like, you know what I'm saying? But you got to, you got to, like, hey, man. It's the image. You're upholding the, the image. image. Got to have your image upheld. So, so I cannot work. I don't even got to get fly if I don't want to get fly. And people going to be like, man, that nigga fly for 12 years strong. He going to always be fly. Yeah, they get, that's the way it so is. So to be successful in the music industry, it can't just be all talent. Image has to go with it. Yeah. It, to, to depending extent. on the crowd that you shooting for. Like I'm mean, like I used to hate when Mo Three used to work. It used to kill my guts. It used to grind my girls. I was like, bro, come on, bro, we gotta go tomorrow real quick, fam. I'm like, I don't care about that fool. Right. I even hurt his flow. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Wow. I was like, I just couldn't. I didn't understand it. But the catch is, it's all about the confidence in the individual. Yeah. Some people need clothes. I'm like, I for a long time I needed clothes to make me feel like walking in a room. Now. It's to the point where I can I can be chilling. I can wear a white tee because I didn't now I done upgraded and I'm into jewelry. I'm into all these other little things yeah. that that that's like that compensate for clothes. But in the meantime, shit, I started my own clothes. I'm gonna be honest mm-hmm. with you, I, and I know that we're gonna get into that, but you know, I can relate because that's how this store got here. Because it was a time when I was hustling, I wouldn't wear the same thing twice. Come on, man. I came like, under I'm that. A, I'm a nigga we that came, came under from that a different, dang I'm, dash a different, long. I'm a different type dude. You don't bro. even wear your white tees. I ain't wear nothing. Like oh, I give yeah. it to my Ooh. brother. I give it to my cousin. Man, I hate that. You know, you know how much white tees this man. Hey, look, I'm a world. Hey, he go out and buy a new white tee every single time. You know what was so crazy? <laughs> my mom used to be like, because at this time, I had my own apartment. But at that, I had my own apartment, but it was with no washing machine in there. And so I was like, man, I used to drive all the way back home. The washing machine free at my mama house. Mm-hmm. So my mama would be like, I don't know why you washing these clothes. Cause you ain't gonna you're wear them again. again. <laughs> That's, like, it. That's I, something we do. I was like, uh, I, but I might, I might. And you not. And I'm not. And she was like, cause you keep coming here with bags. Buy a new one. She was like, you, like, this is ridiculous. I'm talking about we really, I literally, this how this how bad clothes was for me. In high school, I didn't talk to my mom from September of my senior year to like two months in when I was in college because I wound up getting a job. My mom, my only thing my mama did not want me to do growing up was get a job. She wanted me to focus on school. That's it. Nothing else. School. But shit, I made straight A's. So I was like, this shit easy. School easy. I don't, this, I made straight A's. I graduated at eight in my class. So I was like, I don't, I need a job. And uh, I went, since I was in radio television in Lincoln, I wound up working for ESPN. Mm. So I was making $150 an hour. Cause I took the baseball job and I played baseball. Nobody liked baseball, and they was like, "Well, it's an intern. I don't know if it's paid." Why did that job stop? 
because it it was just it was just it was like a freelance. Oh, it was okay. just like you you hold a little I was microphone. About to say, that's a good like job. back in the day, you know, the cameras wasn't so good, the mics wasn't so good. They had them big clear shields. Mm -hmm. That was the only way they picked up sound from the game. So when you heard the the clack of the bat or hit the grass, it was people actually in there really doing work. Mm. The camera wasn't doing all the work. So they'll pay us $150 an hour, baseball game three to four hours. It's 82 baseball games in a year. Man, we're making a killing. Making a killing. Making a real killing. My mama thought I Just sold dope. Just for three hours. Yeah. Yeah. My mama thought I sold dope. Yeah. She was like, how'd you buy all this? And the catch was, I was literally spending my whole check. check. I was giving it to you. <laughs> Yeah, I, got, I ain't even need no more. I ain't need no money to wow. go out. I gotta ask you about. I gotta ask you about. I remember, I, said I was gonna ask you about Carl Crawford and uh, uh, Megan Thee Stallion. Man, it's all over the. I, I wanted. I right wanted to now. talk about it because of the fact. Of course, we both know Carl. Yeah. Um, when you first heard of Megan Thee Stallion, um, you you was in the radio then, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I, matter of fact, we the first people to interview Megan Thee Stallion in my podcast. Me, RP, my man Dipperachi. Uh, uh, and uh, Glam It was me Glam And Dip And Free My Boy Being Frank We had a podcast I think Frank was in I remember your podcast I got mad at you About that podcast Why? Nigga I was upset With you about that You he had princes on there And the nigga gonna say this, You the oldest you, You're still the one That's the oldest Been rocking this out <laughs> <I'm like>, Nigga <laughs> oh, That nigga forgot about us <laughs> Hey but you know You know you <laughs> said it Hey I definitely did <laughs> But you know what I did I, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That nigga, he cow over there. That nigga cow, nigga. Hey, and you know what? She know me well. She like, yeah. nah, she, they know the OG is real. Don't even trip. Like, I've know, been doing we this. We see each other at the Magic Show Collective. They all we see us. Yeah. We see Princess every single they, six months. They rock there. with us, bro. Cause they, I've been around for all of this, man. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I like, and I don't. I think it was because we humble mm -hmm. and we stay out the way. We stay out we the way. We ducked off. And a lot of people. And, 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 and I'm gonna say this. I gotta say this. A lot of people like, man, why you move the store over here? Why you move the store? Over here, I come from the streets, so I really don't want everybody coming to me. <laughs> you don't hear me, man. <laughs> so I, I I move how I want to hey, move. Sometimes sometimes it better be out the way than in the in way. In the way, so we always move like that. People always said, "Why are you not in the mall? Why you, you don't do this?" Started, and we had the finances. The I just I'm a hustler. So first of all, you can't get to your store at night in no damn mall. So I can't do that, bro. We had customers yeah, calling us at 10, 11, 12. I need y'all to open the store. Out. I need the drip. And Thank I you. give it to him every time. I need the drip Thank every you. time. And if it, it push go to serve, I know, man, because you can't get a big T out the house. You can't exactly. get to it. Can't get in the mall. So I don't play those games. I'm a hustler. So, you, so I, I, you wake me up out of bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> need that what? Hey man, you know, hey man, you know, hey man. If I get up now, you know, don't waste up, my time. You can put your price on Come it. Come on now, hey, 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 <laughs> hey. So you get it? Come on, man. It's a sleeping nigga fee. <laughs> I'm an old man now. So, 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 they start saying shit like, I'm an old man now. That's me. That's me. Like, you know, I'm normally in the bed. I got a family. Man, you know, shout out. Hey, nigga, I'm thinking about fat bastards. This nigga word right. hell out of me, man. I'm like, this nigga called me, man. I'm going to go up here, man. I, you got to come, man. Ain't nothing open. It always. I got to go to the club tonight. I got to come. And, and, and there's certain niggas that would call me, so I could never do that hustle like everybody else. Yeah. I, my mind said, I'm like, I can't read that. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. But I just want to go back to the uh, uh, Carl Crawford mm -hmm. making a stallion. Like you say, y'all interviewed her first. And uh, when y'all interviewed her, was, was, they, was she with Carl then? You know what I'm saying? RP to her mom. You know what I'm saying? Her mom was her actually mom there. Was there. Okay. Crawford was there. Okay. And they was just now like starting a partnership. So, you know what I'm saying? I, like when we interviewed her, we actually booked her at our club. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? We had rumors at the time. And I got the footage and it was it was crazy. It was like it was super packed. Like the girls went crazy over her, but it it sucks because it was her power as an artist and her network and her growth that made her big. But it was cause finances that helped contribute to it. So it sucks it's collective. because they needed each, each other. other. It's collective. But like now, it's to the point where it's like she this side saying, "Well, we ain't need you," and this side like, "Damn, like." But it's like, God damn it, both of y'all, y'all wouldn't have been, y'all wouldn't have worked without each other. But what I well, understand. in the music, because Carl was yeah. already, you know, he, he had was financially finances. well, yeah. well yeah. off. He still is, so. So, it's like, but you know, I, I got a great relationship with Megan, and I got a great relationship with Carl. So, from my understanding, from me actually, she was the first artist to come to Dallas and tap in with us. It's like, man, y'all needed each other. 
And it sucks y'all don't got each other because y'all could have did so much more mm -hmm. than what's getting put put out there. But at the same time, it's still a business. But it goes back to like what you said even about a group. It's pride and ego that breaks anything up. Hey, man, it's business, though. The catch is, hey, man, Carl had her riding around and Ben, ben Sprinters, two of them, had her riding with 30 girls everywhere she go. You couldn't do that on your own finances. Mm -mm. Wow. Like you was doing this everywhere. New outfits. You know, Megan went from slick her ponytail to bundles. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's, you got to think about it. Like, it's just. It's not cheap. That shit not cheap now. But what I can't understand is, I know with going back and forth with all the court cases and all of that, why she don't just go ahead and give him what he wants so she can move on with her life. Man, you know, and because can't. when you are a talented artist, you can create so much more and just be great. Yeah, but it's it's like she 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 got the right to feel like she she feel like she worked for that. It's like if you work for your name and then somebody said they they want it because they had it first, you gonna fight for it. Yeah, and you can't blame her for fighting for it. You can't blame him for fighting for it. It's it's a, it's a fair game. It's just now you got Now you got You got to treat this shit like business. Take it to the courts. What the judge gonna say? Yeah, and at the end of the day, those are unrepairable relationships. But, yeah. I'm saying, too. And, and hopefully they, they get past. They can go it. either way. You don't ever know which way it's gonna go. And that, it sucks. It sucks for it sucks for the culture because that's Texas. And you know what I'm saying? And they didn't did so much. Like look at look at what she done done in those years. Mm -hmm. Because we what well, we brought her back in like what 2017, 2018, and look at what she done did in the last five years. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like it sucks because man, you I I'm 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 for anything dealing with Texas. Carl from Texas, Megan from Texas. I'm for everything that's Texas. That's how well, we you, are. You know what I'm saying? saying. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, you in the you in the midst of it right now, see, So I want I want everybody to win and it sucks they gotta deal I with mean, all Texas that shit. Texas great again. You know what I'm saying? You know, it sucks <laughs> they gotta deal with that shit, but at the meantime, you know, it's still business now. It's right. been I, I, okay. Um, you know, like like you, you just one of those guys, man. That you've been, you've been, you've been able to keep yourself in the midst of everything. Now you, you know, when my niggas come to town, shout out to Money Man and all these different people That's that come. Guy, man. Listen, man, when these guys come to town, they tapping in at V Live. How? What is? How did you end up doing that? Man, it was just, it was just luckily enough, like, like I said, when I jumped back in the game, when I took that little hiatus, when I jumped back in the game, I started working at uh, DGs at the time. Yeah, and, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, with John them. Yeah, DC uh, came down to the city. You know Matter of fact, it wasn't even DC. It was a, uh, it was DJ Eric them that was doing like the Houston takeover. So it was battling like Dallas girls versus Houston girls, mm -hmm. Houston DJ versus Dallas DJ. And then the owner caught wind of it, like, damn, they got a nigga that sound just as good as what we got going on in Houston. We might need to open up a club in Dallas. Yeah. And shit, that's, that's what happened. But I, I'm really, my co host ain't here tonight, Money Moses. He usually yeah. be here, he worked with you down yeah. there. He, I used to be on that nigga. I said, Did you tell that nigga? I said, Come on, Ball Star 101. <laughs> when we first started, I was like, What's up with what's up with this nigga? He won't come to Ball Star. Man, nobody told I say, me, bro, bro. bro. This nigga, he this, said he, he told, said he told, you, told you multiple man. times. I said, Man, hey, hey, check this bro, out. Bro, I tripped out off of you hey. at first. I promise you. I used to tell people, I said, You know what? That nigga tripping. Hey, it's, hey. A, it's about five I'm niggas. Finna, I'm, finna, I'm finna fuck you up. We at the Magic Show in uh, Vegas. I run into your, uh, your wife. I, I, first thing, she's like, come on, boss talk. I was like, get my number. Let's do it. It was, it was nothing. And I'm hurt. Yeah, and but I, it, it was a time it, when it, I was trying to figure it out with my, with Money Moses. He said, no, nah, I told him. I'm like, how the hell he told this hell nigga? Hell nah, man. Bro, I, I say, this nigga lie. must don't know who I am. Man, he done forgot. I say, I know the nigga know me. How, fa how fast we get this done? You got it done pretty fast. Well, I I'm just, I'm just telling you, I asked, I'm going to be on him because then I say, I say, mm -hmm. you need to be here tomorrow because I want to hear who lying. Somebody lying. Yeah, man, and, and you know what? I only missed, I only missed yesterday because I supposed to came yesterday and right. because well, we I, had, I, yeah, we had a bunch of them. Yes, I'm glad you didn't mm -hmm. come yesterday. I, it was about five. Mario, of Mario was trying to see you. Yeah, he yeah. wanted he to see you wore your gear. Yeah, he, I, uh, he had your gear on yeah. yesterday, so yeah. he wanted to rock with you. I uh, got down me, uh, I, I, I got the times mixed up and I was, no, I was at the back cages, man, just, out there with it's them kiddos. Been, it's, it's like I said, it, this is a different world for us. For some, I mean, I've been dealing. You know, I've been dealing with everybody for a long time. No doubt, no doubt. I just wasn't doing this, but when I started doing it, I was like, you know, 
Man, this year we did this for to keep relevancy in the middle of a pandemic, bro. No doubt. No but doubt. it turned into something totally different and way bigger, bro. I'm and telling you. It's like, what the hell? Like, okay, these niggas want this? And then what it, what it did, it opened up doors to talk to the young people, like I was telling you. No, nah, for sure. And the young people need somebody to talk to, bro. It's nah, like they sure. don't have nobody, like the niggas in the streets using them just to get clout. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, and you know what? That's, that's, the, that's the illest thing that I want the youth to understand, man. Just because they're older than you, don't make them a big homie. Because, you know what I'm saying? We, I, grew, I grew up personally under the, under the law where it was like, Hey man, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. You gonna have to go to school. You gonna have to go to like that's the law. I I personally come on. So I really wasn't in the streets. I was a sidewalk guy. Yeah. Because I wasn't allowed to. Cause the big people out there, I was hanging around like, bro, you don't need this. Ain't even you. This ain't for you. Chill. Like you man, go out there and go hoop. And hey man, you don't need to do all that. So. I'm glad that I came under that atmosphere because you got some people that, hey man, you got you got ducks running around here, man. Hey, look, you want to go do this? Yeah, and uh, and then if something happened to you, it's like, all right. Yeah. I gotta ask you this before you get off of here, man. What does Bebe mean to you? Man, Bebe is he the goat? He's the goat. I, I like it's, it's like there's no in betweens on it. Only reason I say that because Bebe put us, he he helped us. Get in position to for me to understand a lot of different motions and movements and how to goddamn network with different individuals. And then as a as a guy that was just only dancing, the first time Bebe sent us to Shreveport and me watching him like talk and control the crowd, I was like, all right, that's what I want to do. I don't want to rap because everybody wanted me to rap. Hit that man, you might as well be a rapper. You got the swag. They know I know how to talk. You know what I'm saying? You might as well gonna make you a song. But I seen Baby, I was like, nah, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna MC. I wanna control the crowd. I wanna make everybody touch their toes. I wanna make everybody spin around and do the hokey pokey. Mm -hmm. Like, look what this man doing. Look, look at the, the influence he have on the, the culture out here. So I was like, man, I want that for Dallas. And we we didn't have nobody like that. We had DJs, we had rappers, we didn't have nobody that had a right. voice of the city. That was actually from the city. So, like, baby, we always have powwows, you know what I'm saying? And watching him, he's just watching his motions, even if he don't talk to me or whatever, what he always do. It's just, he's like a he's like a mentor. You can you can watch him and be like, all right, this is how you need to move. Or this is how you need to move. Because everybody need a person that they look up to as far as like, hey, that's the big homie. All right, look how he move. He don't do this, he don't do that. But he do do this. All right, he do. He might do that wrong, so let me fix that, so I don't have to go through that. Mm -hmm. So that's how I look at Bebe. Like he a big dog. Like he was he one of the reasons that you ended up on K one hundred four. I don't, I don't, I don't, probably so because one thing I always, I always, I've grown to learn the things that people say behind closed doors and behind my back puts me in a in a win win situation or a lose lose situation. I could bet my probably my last dollar in my pocket that he was probably in my favor on on my position. He could have been in one of those rooms. He could have. Mm. I, I I I will bet it. I don't know, but I could bet that that's just because he's always been genuine to me. You know how people be like, "Hey man, I don't fuck with him because so, so. I can't say that. You want? I can't have no ill will intent. You know what I'm saying on, yeah. on this man. You know what I'm saying because he did too much to put me in position to be who I am. Mm -hmm. So. I get it, man. Um, like I said, I asked you that because it seemed like, you know, the relationship would have to be there as long as you've been at that radio station. So I was just yeah. trying to, you two know, brothers so working at a radio station, they should be, you know, and both of y'all dark skin niggas. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. You know, yeah, we players, you know. You know, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I always say, man, hey, man, dark skin niggas is players. I don't care. I don't know. I mean, if, even if they're not player, they just play. So, you know, all you got to do is act hey, later on to get them right. But hey, man. <laughs> Man, I mean, so so I mean, who do you think is the most uh, like uh, underrated in, in the city when it comes down to the music? Underrated, I have to hands down say uh, Ty Ty Harris. Ty Harris, man, that boy, he was just on here a, a while back. I loved him. Lyrically, can't nobody fuck with Ty Harris. Putting or or composing music, can't nobody touch him. It's just 
it's I don't know why people are not being receptive to him. To him. And it sucks because he give me that same lane how it was Lil Runny. Like even though everybody know Lil Runny Mother F, he still is underrated because people don't respect and value. He's the Dallas Ludacris. Mm. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Like he is one of those. He's one of those ones. He's one that, of those ones for real. He's a special kind of guy. Man, I'm lyrically, content, putting together a song. He got the hit records. Like, what more do y'all ask for him? And y'all still don't get that man. And I credit. love the personality. I love the fact yeah. he's not into all that beef and, and anything man. like that. Man, let me it's, tell you, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of underrated cats, man. But, if I I sit back and just think, but you said Ty Harris would be your number one. I think underrated. Ty. I think Ty because I just. I love his him musically. Mm -hmm. Like he is his content, his videos, his subject matter. He he dope. Man, let me tell you something, man. And shout out Lil Runny. Like I said, when I opened this platform up from day one, he one of those guys that yeah. I, I didn't have to say nothing twice. He came and not only did he came, he dropped jewels. Mm -hmm. he, he dropped just yeah. pretty much game like, hey, he this, said, be, be very, very careful, careful about who you bring on the show. All these different things because he knew, he said, he wanted them dudes to say, it's special, bro. What you doing is going to be great. Yeah. They could see it. Like, it's niggas that come in here and be like, mm -hmm. when you have people flying in from North Carolina, you just open this thing up or, or or say a call or somebody just fly in like I want to be on boss talk and just call you the same day and yeah it's like you're not expecting this but then when God start blessing you you're like dang man this here is dope like it's you get to deal with certain people no doubt. um but but he was one of those guys that I could I, I could listen to or if I called him and I needed somebody and I couldn't get to him he was gonna call mm. you know no doubt. No so doubt. God give you favor with certain people man and it's just a dope thing so when you mentioned him that I thought about that but Ty when he came on this show we know he, he talented tough. I he love tough. the way that okay Got another one for you. What's the what? And you got to give me an answer too, nigga. Don't try to get out of it. I mean, you know, I'm stiff for the boot leather, man. Who I'm gonna is, who, what's the, what's the Dallas anthem? The Dallas anthem. My, 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 my <laughs> Dallas anthem or the world's Dallas anthem? No, I, I want you, I, I don't, however you put it, I you, got, it's, 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 it's I, I you. I got five ways to answer this question. <laughs> Globally, the Dallas anthem is, you better call Tyrone, Eric, Erica Badu. Okay. Globally. You know what I'm saying? If we on some urban nigga shit, globally, South Side. The hey, there it is again. <laughs> South Side. The damn really. That damn song be coming through, boy. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to go call Tyrone, South Side The Realest, and then, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mr. Hit the whole nation. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hit the whole Mason. I'm saying like Mr. Hit the whole Mason, man. I'm, I, only reason I say that I was at a Cowboys game about about two, about, I think uh, before Corona. Mm -hmm. So that's like 20, 2019. That's when Beyonce, Jay Z, like uh, uh, George Bush, everybody was there at this game. I, I don't know which game it was. Ray Shrimmer was there. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Ray Sherman. And they and they they had the one of the biggest songs at the time that that girl is a real yeah, that, 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 that was uh, the that was the one. Man, we watching the game, man, and 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 I got my I got my I got my boy Jay Red with me. And Jay Red like, hey bro, Ray Sherman over here, fool. I'm like for the Cowboys on for I, I I'm a real sports fan. fan. So I'm zoned in. I don't want to talk nobody. nobody. And we losing. Yeah. So, I'm really, no, nobody so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really hurt. Like this shit really cut me deep. <laughs> like, like they pay me to play or some shit. The in there. <laughs> the was in there hurt the other day when they lost. That nigga couldn't even do the interview. Man, E, I'm just. Uh, I'm, I'm like, nigga, you got to snap out of here, hey, man. Nah, for <laughs> real. Go, man. That nigga, and uh, Ray Shrimmer came up there and they was like, hey, bro, this hit that whole fool. And I was like, hey, what's up, fool? They were like, like, like the dude that was dancing, bro. Like, bro, we, bro, we, we, Grew up like, bro, we fuck with that shit. Like, I, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> now you see what I mean? Like, you can't be playing with this, man. It took my motherfucking mind off the cowboys. <laughs> I said, man, y'all bullshit. Man, y'all motherfuckers don't know nothing about this shit. For real. Man, them niggas pulled a motherfucking video up right, while we kicking it. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sideline. Yeah. And we're like, bro, this you, bro. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. So, that type of impact. 
it was like, bro, that's 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 a big run. But that's for me, though. I'm biased. Yeah, but at the end of the day, that's I'm why I'm hard on you too about yeah. the fact of what we was talking about earlier. Like yeah. you can't the other you OG in your own way, and yeah. you gotta be that bridge that we keep talking about. Nah, the for same sure. thing I told Renetta, wasn't it? It's certain things certain niggas can't do. And, and you, you one of them niggas that do it you got them, so. you you can speak to the whole thing. You know what's so crazy though? You know what's so crazy though? I I'm fucked up how that big chief I rubbed the triple D. Ooh, that ho, yeah, yeah, boy, that ho, wow. wow. boy. People don't really give that song the deserving well, credit it needs, man. Because we dance, bro, we body, man, we man, man. But you can't shit. say that. You, but you can't say that because I'm gonna go there with you and be like, uh, uh, that uh, bit Tonton nigga. I'm from Dallas, nigga. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm, a, I'm a, <laughs> Hey, the only reason. <laughs> hey, hey, look, you know what's so crazy? I'm, I'm just gonna, saying. I'm gonna, tell, I'm gonna tell you about, about that. You know, I'm from the Grove, so you know, I'm 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 heavy DSO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I went to school in Oak Cliff. I went to Sarah Zoom Walk, yeah. and I went to Lisbon. You know what I'm saying? So I got to touch all the different blocks growing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I always was been from the Grove. I play. I, I went to school in Oak Cliff, and then I went to high school in South Dallas. So I kind of like touched everything. The reason why I did not know that that was those were all beef songs between Nino and DSR. I didn't know that either. Oh man! So now, looking back at it, that song, bro. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm from. Uh, you know when you know when he said, yeah, I'm from Dallas, but now nah, we don't say that. Yeah, Fuck yeah, your block, yeah. We come AK that. Yeah. I did not know that they was beef. Those I didn't were either. beef songs. You, you had to learn. How did you learn that, though? Because. You played it. No, me and Rain was having an argument like, like, hey, bro. He was like, bro, all these songs, without the beef, Dallas don't have no anthem. Southside the Realist was, was a response song. Like, it was like every song, because they was, at that time, they were saying, I don't know how true this is, but they was like, hey, man, South Dallas didn't have a, a anthem. And, you know, South Dallas was monumental. You know, Martin Luther King mm -hmm. on Sunday. But they never had an anthem. Oh, Cliff had anthems. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, people wouldn't speak on South Dallas like that until they made these anthems. So, without beefing, because, you know, all the fights and stuff was going on between different hoods, different blocks. Without the beef, Dallas, if you take the beef away, we don't have a hit. We don't have a hit single. Outside, all this, like, uh, even even Yellow, Yellow songs, people was claiming that was a beef song to a certain extent. Yeah. But without that controversial behind this music, the, the music don't get as big as it should. I agree. I, I told mm -hmm. Gator Man the other day without without wait a minute, without, without his song without that without that uh, uh, I don't walk through, you know that come on that, man that song right there come the on, needle, that moves the needle for me in Dallas. You know what come I'm saying? On, man. When, when, he, when he said I don't walk the block until my feet hurt the slab. But but all that was right I took there. The good with the bad. Without this, I this, took a vow to never ever, ever come in last. And I done told a whole damn word to kiss my ass. You can't be from Dallas. You can't rap that. Bruh, listen, I told him then I he I don't even like this song. He, I'm like, he said he, hey, I'm gonna give it I'm finna I'm finna fuck y'all up. I said whatever. The mister hit that whole song, I hate it. <laughs> Same, <laughs> Same thing. thing. <laughs> Same thing. Bruh, I, I'm a, I'm a, it's so crazy because I don't know if you guys know uh, an artist named No Shame. Yeah, yeah he was on here. You know what I'm saying? No Shame was supposed to have been the original voice on Mr. Hit That. Yeah. But it it, it, it didn't recollect. Like, you know what I'm saying? And we wind up, me and Trill, we went to uh we went to the the elephant, like a little artist yeah. showcase. We wound up seeing wireframe and I was like, hey bro, that's the voice, fool. That nigga there, that's the voice. He came in and did the song. But I didn't like it because it was so slow. Yeah. And I, I wanted like an upbeat. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted I wanted at that time. It was that young dro, ain't I? Ain't yeah, I? Yeah, ain't yeah, I? yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, wanted, I wanted some bounce, <laughs> and I was like, man, this slow ass song. So we're like, man, I don't like this shit. But we played that shit, and the fucking world just went that shit crazy, in, dog. It, it just, it was meant. Mm -hmm. It hit, and and I whether you it. like it or not, nigga. That's 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 you, nigga. That's your song. You can't get out of that. I'm the fuck you up. This you can't get around. It's it? a crazy story. Who came up with the name of the song? My name was already Mister Hit the Hoe. I know. So and he was hitting that hoe. <laughs> so <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was it was it was like it was already. Who wrote it? Uh, Trail Trail and Rick. Yeah, mm -hmm. Trail and Rick. So before we performed that song, we heard that uh, T Wheels and uh, 
God damn, I can't think of my boy. He gonna be so mad at me, bro. I can't think of the other dude that was with T Wheels, Juicy Nine. T Wheel and Juicy Nine. T Wheel supposed to got a deal off of the Nature Walk song. So everybody supposed to be opening up for Boots and Webby. See the old concert. And they let all the local artists with all the dancing songs perform. And at that time, Trill and Rick had the biggest song, which was uh, She a Bad Little Bro. Mm-hmm. We opened up with the Mr. Hit That record. I, th- I damn near think we fucked up that man deal. I bet. That whole way, that whole had that energy. It had it. it but had the catch that is, remember I told y'all we was gunning for everybody because mm-hmm. everybody was getting yeah. deals. Yeah. So it was like, all right, the nigga come to sign you, I'm finna fuck this bitch up where he come sign me. Mm. <laughs> but we didn't have the mind to be like, all right, boom, come get him, boom, then come back get yeah, him. Yeah, I know. Boom, come back and get him, and then oh, fruit, 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 fruit. now Dallas got twelve big artists. Now these twelve. Seven of these niggas might go bankrupt because they don't know no business. But four of these niggas might be popping and they might be to the next entity. Mm-hmm. People scared. People scared that if you say you're going to get me and then come back for you. Then you might not you, come back. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, yeah. might not come back. Yeah. Exactly. But we fucked up too, though, because when we signed the Interscope, you know what I'm saying? Why Frank wanted his money. We should have just paid that man and got him out the way. But we, we Dallas, we some cheap niggas. We some cheap ass niggas, man. Already, man. <laughs> you say we cheap, man. man. I'm, tell, I'm telling you, the only reason why we didn't blow up and become superstars, bro, is because Trey supposed to pay that man two hundred dollars to sing that fucking song. He didn't. Know. That cheap motherfucker did not pay him. Damn. He tried to pay him two hundred after the song got big. The nigga wanted thirteen thousand. So we wind up doing that. Then come to find out the nigga was signed. Wildframe was signing somebody. Damn. And at that time it was all the way turned up. Yeah. Or Mr. Hit That Ho, which button we gonna press? All these niggas ain't got their business together. All, All the way, way turned, turned up. up, and we've just, we just, <sighs> we had the 8 million in four days on World Star. That shit was unheard of. I already mm-hmm. know, man. That song the was The shit big. we had going on, but we just didn't have our business right. Yeah, yeah. We was our own damn Why, why, you, why you, don't, you don't have artists or nothing? That's you how need I was just thinking artists. about that. You know how this game goes. Stop playing, man. Man, even I, if you ain't, ain't just doing nothing, mentoring him. Do you want to do it? I ain't. Gonna, I mentor a lot of different artists. Yeah, but all like Ryan and tell you, it's babysitting. I know it is. It I is. got four kids. <laughs> oh, I forgot about this. You got the tribe called Quest over there. I got. I got, gonna add about five more. Yeah. All right. Shit, I got. I got one more in me. <laughs> I got one more in me. You got to give me my top three before we get off the top of three artists of all time. Dead, dead or alive. alive. Number one. You tell me you ain't Any been watching genre. Boss Talk. Man, I've I been I've been watching Boss Talk, and that's what's so crazy because nobody asked me to come on. Oh, hold here on, we go. On. When was the first time you seen Boss Talk? Probably like nigga, we did let me hold views on. in one. No, no, uh, uh, it was during Corona. It was during Corona. It was during Corona, and what's so crazy? E, you look so different now. I didn't even know that was you. <laughs> Everybody say that though, dude. Because I grew up. Because you know out. what? Because I had inboxed you and I sent you a link to one of our um, shows that we did, and I said, "Check this out. Tell me what you think of it." But then nobody asked me to come. I did check it out. But you never responded. Because my next thing, when you responded, I'll be like, "Hey, well." Hey, look. Check this out. I want people to understand. In life, look at look at my text messages. Oh yeah, them hoes going in. Look at my phone calls. Yeah, yeah, them hoes going in. I put my phone on Do Not Disturb. I done missed 22 calls since I've been here. Yeah. No doubt. People don't be understanding the power of them phones. They you called me one, one day. No, you didn't call me. I made, I think it was, which one of them girls was it I made call you? I think it was, uh, what's the look, the little dog girl I take to Vegas with us, used to take with us? That's sad. Know, she gonna so kill me. To Vegas. What is? I always take everybody, bro. That's one thing you can. What, I'm you, matching. Nigga, I take it's everybody. It's my first year going to Vegas. Nigga, Talk I took everybody. You know how long we've been going since was, when you were coming here? It, you know what? It sucked because they didn't have China there, so I didn't get was to. T- then sport. The, 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 they, they went had, sourcing one there. Sourcing was there. Sourcing but was there. I know sourcing, but they didn't have no. No, the China couldn't come. Yeah, because yeah. because of, of Trump. Damn. So I didn't get to get the you didn't full, get to get the full impact. Full effect. Without mm-hmm. China, it's like everybody yeah. want five thousand, twenty thousand 
uh, for one one item. I you can't, know, yeah. well, you no, know what, there no. were some people that I saw there because I wanted some things made. And they were like, well, yeah, just call us. We can make the sample. So I did find some people there. Yeah, but I'm. They weren't yeah, they even, wasn't authentic even, tournament. Even, even after they do the sample, yeah. they, you still got to make a thousand or five hundred. Yeah, yeah, there was like a hey, thousand. You know. But let like me, um, shoot, we been, we was going there when you was coming here. As Man, a kid. Was going every there six months. Kid. And, you, and what's so crazy, months. y'all used to tell me. I'm pretty sure because I try to help everybody. It's like yeah, I used to tell me because I was like, man, I want to start a clothing line. I'm gonna start one. I'm gonna start one. It took me goddamn 15 years to start one. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a COVID for and, me to start and one. And you and and you're good at it because I, I done had a uh, uh, push a man live. All these people been on here wearing your hat. I already knew this was your man, stuff. But so many. Already, I try to what's the name of your line? Hidalgo. Hidalgo. Okay, yeah. Hidalgo. And 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 how long you just put it out two years ago? Yeah, because I, I, you know what's so crazy. I uh I, I'm a big fan of Jay Z and okay. the airplane hats. You know what I'm saying? The the, the airplane hats. You gonna get that top three? Mm-hmm. I love that shit so bad. So I was like, man, I need to make a hat like how Chance the Rapper he got that three hat. I was like, I want to wear an H hat for hit that, but I can't call it hit that clothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just went down on uh, in the dictionary and started scrolling, and I was like, man, I gotta incorporate Dallas. It has to be D A L in it. So I started googling. H words, they got DL, DAL in that motherfucker. And I ran across what Hidalgo. What is the meaning of Hidalgo? Though? Hidalgo is a, a, a noble gentleman from humble beginnings. Okay, wow. that's you know still what I'm saying? Cool. In, in Spanish. But for my term, it's for humble beginnings. But how Dallas go? Mm. Wow, wow. How Dallas go? I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like it too. That's dope, so, man. I didn't never even know that. I, I just was, knew that was your right. brand. Yeah, I knew that was your brand, but I didn't know the meaning. that's the same hat Pusha Man was wearing when he yeah. came on here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just didn't Did know the Did you see Pusha Man wearing the hat on here? Yeah, I, he sent me a picture, and okay. I posted I posted that, though. I didn't even know. Like, I if anybody so, wore my gear, I'm posting it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Shit, I appreciate it. Like I said, I see you still helping a lot of these artists when they put stuff out. Some of the ones that have been around a long time, you still play their music, you still show love. Nah, for sure. I still like like the Fat Pimps, the Tux. You still do it. I'm still playing the Royals. I see you doing it you know what I'm saying like I, I, I still try to show as much love within the confines of not getting fired mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. give me give me the top three artists of all time dead or alive number one top three artists of any all genre. time any genre dead or alive number any one any genre you only get three mm-hmm. number one I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Of course, Jay Z. I'm not even playing. Oh, no, no, no. You tripping. He, he, all, that. he all Texas now, so okay, let nah. me see what he does. No, he can do anything. No, you said any genre. That's right. Like any genre. That's right. I'm, I'm that's, going to go Michael Jackson. Jackson. Here we go. I'm going Mike Jackson. I knew it. <laughs> you got to go Mike Jackson, man. Michael Jackson. Who's number two? Nigga, man. Nigga let, me see, bad, nigga. let me see who he's going to do number two. And I ain't going to lie, man. I don't. I, I'm fucked up, man. That pimp see me. Oh, <laughs> boy, you just did. That nigga pimp me. Now you good. Nigga, man. What, did you pimp? like that? Did you like that? That's all right. Boy, we do this. This is a whole pimp C platform. If you <laughs> hey, nah, let me tell you, that man, nigga, man. Mm. Hey, pimp C changed my life, man. Man, hey, look, I yours was, too. Hey, look, my junior year, going into my senior year, man. I'm talking about. I, it was this one girl who I was just so. Uh, I'm just head over heels with, and she broke a nigga heart so bad. Damn. I'm talking about. It was so bad that I made the remember win in my school. Like, like I'm talking about. She had me thinking I'm going to the homecoming with her. She had a she date. Shook you. Had me dressed like her and everything. I'm trying to take pictures with her. She, she keep, broke up with before homecoming. Now we was never together, but oh. it was just oh, some crazy I was shit. He I'm loved talking, her. Oh man, I'm fucked love. up. That nigga was in love. I, I was fucked up. <laughs> what happened, man? I'm talking about. And what's so crazy? I had my partner to, to drive me to the homecoming. I ain't have a car. And then after the homecoming, she was like, well, I'm going to ride with my homegirl to uh, Denny's. Man, my partner car break down. So I'm stuck in the goddamn me uh, garage. Aww. My other partner come like, hey, bitch, I'll just take you up there. Then cool. I get up there. She dressed like a whole nother nigga. The nigga got her, got, she got the nigga jacket on. I'm like... This shit cold. I walk in that bitch, everybody looking at me crazy, like, what the fuck? I go over there and just look at her, you know what I'm saying? I speak, and I don't even peep it yet. And then I sit down with my other homegirl, and I'm like, ooh, it's cold. I ain't got no ride to leave. So I'm just Jesus, sitting there. Well, got you a, wallin' in it. 
Man, I'm just sitting in that shit, dog. <laughs> what, what did you do, man? man I, did I, she say nothing to you? Man, she she had it so smooth. She ran me like a four dollar bill, man. It was like it was like two, uh, two could play that game. She had me on how to be a player, nigga. She was <laughs> she working the room and still had a nigga feeling good, boy. What did pimp do, man? Man, I put that fucking pimp on, man. Say, so, man. man. If you know, like I know, you would get <laughs> down, down on, on the floor. floor. I can't and then, hey, look, man. He had me screaming, fuck a bitch. I'm, hey, listen, man. Turn into Mr. Hit that hoe, man. Man, that's a do- see, that's a dope story. Number three. Oh, so that's how you got that name. I never ever hey, thought start, about the I meaning start, of man, that I'm, name. Hey, look, I, I start, I never it never dawned on me on the I meaning of that name. Anything, yeah, and I'm active. I, uh, look, cause I was in high school, I was broke, but I was so smart, I got a like a forty thousand uh, dollar scholarship, and I went to UT Dallas and Richardson. So at that time, if you was a if you was like if you were inner city student, and you go to a predominantly white college, they got they can cut you yeah. a, a yeah. stipend mm-hmm. at that time. They can't yeah. pay you, mm-hmm. but it's a stipend. Right. So at that time, my stipend if you make a four point you get thirty five hundred. Mm-hmm. So, you know, summer one, summer two. So you get that. Per grade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So however many classes you take, me so boom, I'm taking, give me three classes. Give me 12,000. Some of two, give me another 12. I'm, Damn. I'm 18. I got about a 40 ball. I'm balling. I'm spending money. I'm buying clothes for my partners. Everything. What? Wow. And I'm hitting everything. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Mr. Hit That Old, right? <laughs> Shout out to J-Rock. J-Rock gave me my, my name. Did she ever try to, uh, J-Rock did, no, that's a different. J Rock. Yeah. yeah. But did she ever try to holler back at you after all of that? Yeah, we can't. You know what I'm saying? We cool. We cool. But I had to go back and finish the mission. I did that. Already. I ain't going to never say who it is, but I, what I'm talking about, but she is the reason I turned into a. And then after I got it out of my system, I, I got back south. That's dope. That's dope. Man, so said. hell no. Nah, I should have. <laughs> every time I broke over somebody, I should just put that pill back on. <laughs> God damn. I man. Should've. Number three, man. Number three. Number three. Michael P- Michael Jackson, PMC, mm-hmm. and number three. All time. And I, I'm going I'm going with my name, Kurt Franklin, bro. Dang, that's uh, dope. Kurt that's Franklin. the first Kirk Franklin we've gotten. That's not Kurt Franklin, bro. That's, that's my dope. first, first concert I ever went to in my life. The Stone, mm-hmm. 1998. That nigga my mama hit me against the wall. At that time, I, I learned how to perform. I mm. learned I learned how to move he a crowd. He is a performer. I, I used to be a, I used to be a gospel mom, like and I wow. was real big, like like during the summer. You know they had them little conferences all over the world, like Florida, Miami, whatever. Mm-hmm. My parents would take us with the church or whatever, and I was like a big deal, like like dancing like a mom. That's why every time I dance in the club, I don't never like pop lock or nothing because I used to pop lock in church, so wow. I never did it in the regular oh. the, the, in, the, in the streets. Got you. But like Kurt Franklin, oh, that man bad, that man bad, boy. Wow, Kurt yeah. Cole, boy. I already mm. know it. I just had uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Jada, uh, Jada on mm-hmm. here. And, Which Jada? Uh, Jada, uh, Ar- is it Arnell. She, okay. she's a she's a uh, R and B singer, man, yeah. she amazing can, voice, she can man. Go. Yeah. She, yeah, and she's uh, uh, Kurt Franklin's goddaughter. Oh yeah, Kurt Cole, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, and she he he believe in a brand too. So it's and Kurt Cole, man, man. I had to let you listen to that, man. It, it, you gonna say, damn? I'm gonna let him listen. Man, to I wish man. I knew how to sing, boy. I'm, like, oh, boy. I'm talking about. I'm talking about. I would man. be so bad. I know how to. Ooh. God knew not to give me no vocals, boy. <laughs> man, how can people get a hold of you? I gotta say that you know <laughs> hey, you are Mister Hit That. Hey, look, Instagram page Dub Mister Hit That T H E M R H I T D A T. I'm glad y'all spell my name right, man. A lot of people spell my name. Man, my wife, T H A T. No, I'm saying so that no, I'm saying that means a lot to me. Know Listen, what I'm saying? man, my wife always was fond of you, far as you coming here as a kid. Now nah, for sure, she always would tell me this about this boy. I see the little red in the hair. I said, this little boy, man. <laughs> The blonde. Yeah, then I said, this little boy, he be at the store. She said, yeah, he always come by. I'm nah, like, that's sure. dope, man. For and sure. then it was unique, that Frankie song, that mm-hmm. nigga, she was with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like, it's certain people that I remember, it's like, dang, man, you know, these dudes are young and they grown and they moving in the city, bro. Nah, for you sure. You one of those guys, man. Thank you for yeah. everything you do. We love you, man. Man, man, you family here, man. You sure, know, sure. Even though he left us out when he said I the know. ones who've been hey, selling down. Hey, but he know. redeeming <laughs> it tonight. I, I'm redeeming yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to sit back and be like, yeah, I did say You did? I see it. I was looking like, what? Yeah, man. I know, I, I, I know what I'm saying. But she know, she Somet- know. Sometimes you gotta you know what I'm saying. You gotta charge to my head and not my heart. <laughs> <laughs>
But what I, do, what, I want, what I do want to ask, um, with the clothing brand, um, where do you see yourself going with this? Yeah. Um, this this year. And when been, we going to get our damn clothes? Man, man. I'm, I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to bring y'all some gear. The only reason I didn't bring y'all some gear because I ain't in my, I, uh, I went and bought a Sprinter uh, truck where I actually really? got all my gear in. And I do like the mobile, like people pull up and stuff like that. But I'm That's my, dope, bro. I'm yeah. my well, then we, we, go, we, was we went to Chicago and, and, and we was gonna buy that one, and I turned right. it down. I was gonna go buy a cash, the uh, the black one, mm -hmm. I, and that whole decked, and I was gonna make that whole out of whole boutique inside. It had some inside. transmission problem or something. No, it, no, it just what, has what, a, a what small oil leak. I had it, the pressure test put on it, and I was like, hell no, I'm not gonna get E4 all this money. And they I took it to Ben's house, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it was used, I'm like, I'm not gonna spend this uh, fifty or sixty thousand cash nah, on something. Then hell, man, I'm talking, and that's what's so crazy. I uh, all, all the little profits I made off that, that was the first thing I did. I always put the money back into it. So I really never even seen the shit. So, mm -hmm. but it's it's dope, man. And I, I just really got my business stuff going. So this year should be a good year. But I know my only flaw in, in my clothing brand is I don't believe in myself. Why you have it's, you it, have just, an awesome brand? It just you know, I, don't, I don't know, but I, I'm I'm doing better. You think it's because you just need to get more educated about it? You need to take that trip to Hong Kong. You need to stay over gotta, there. You need to go I see about go. the production crews and, I gotta and go understand do it. the whole. Just and you know the what's business. so crazy? Me me and my new old lady. You know what I'm saying because we started linking up in 2019. Tough. So that's what we was playing and like we hey, we finna go over there we finna yeah, hang out and then goddamn COVID hit mm -hmm. well I think uh, one thing I can tell you um, because of me being in this so long um, you know my friends I mean I can reach out and touch some serious dudes bro and I could put together a panel of guys who already done that and and who and they'll tell you who to reach gonna out to. They're going to tell you exactly what to do. To go Man, we need to definitely like tap in. I, I'm, I'm linked with the ones. I could promise you that. Man, I need the ones <laughs> and, and not the two. Bro. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, like they ready. already went and stayed, and we talked. We friends. You know, I'd be a relationship. So, For sure. And they ain't in Texas either, but they still, they went and took those trips. When I call them, they answer that it's love. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Say so no we more. need to Let's do a panel. I was going to do a panel. Remember I was saying I was going to put mm -hmm. them, because they're not here, but I was going to do a, like a Zoom and put yeah. put like the ones like you. And and I think it was one more guy that I was going to put in here, and we just going to talk about the clothes. The clothes. So, Educate people, man, yeah, so people it's, can learn. It's dope, but a lot of people don't understand. I spent a lot of money on on product that I don't give out. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't feel like it's acceptable On to the, level. the standard I want my brand to sit next like my hats I want my brand to sit next to, to New Era and, mm -hmm. and, and pro be able standard. to say come pro on. standard you know you ever, you ever watch, look at pro standard come on now that's a black dude named Mike Harris he he, he, he bad I want I want my I want to be able to and everybody look at the quality and be like okay yeah this dope all right, boom, boom. Look at it. He got his name in the inside yeah yeah okay like, like, like that's the stuff I care about yeah like mm -hmm. the outside is easy but when you open your head up and, and other people who, like vendors, like, okay, yeah, this a real brand. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Like, well, on the little button at the top, I want my logo printed in, in that button. You got to be right. Like, people don't be understanding that, that, that fine-tuned. Mm -hmm. But when they see that, they know, and if you, when you, when you up the price, because that stuff costs. <laughs> it's not if you up the price. Yeah, when you, you up, up the, price. the price. So when people... They know that the detail costs, so they'll, they're willing to pay that. And yeah. I, you know, I don't give a shit, because I, I remember when I first started my brand, and I, I put it online, I was like, go online and shop with it, and they were like, $50 for a hat. Hell no, nah, hit that, you too. And I was like, man, hey... This shit, hey man. Embroidery I, is not cheap. Not at all. Shit, man. At all. I'm, I'm talking about 3D levels. No, you already saying? know. Inside of that motherfucker ain't got no stitching showing, you know. Well, it just it's it's name in that joint. Your your, your logo, man. Come on, man. In a tab, you know, just yeah. just to look fine. Detail. But I sometimes see. it takes you educating people. And you know to sometimes, really know. And you know sometimes, hey man, this 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 just might not be for you. Mm -hmm. That's it, and, I, and I I'm okay like with that. that. Too. Yeah, you got to realize when you were coming here buying clothes, who would have thought that we'd be selling, uh, at that time, $200, $250 pair of jeans, red monkey jeans, in, on, in box springs. Like, nobody, they were like, oh, y'all, hi, how many people come here? You, they come here like, so what many the people hell? Told us that, or some people will say, I remember, and this is white folks who will come in and will tell us that this store ain't going to last a, a month. <laughs> We Ain't nobody gonna buy a guy looking shirts the for this price. Y'all still here and walk out. We like we laughing because we know yeah. we know that we knew our customer and yeah. we wasn't worried about what you say. Yeah, we knew already how and to that, shop and around. That, and that and that and that be the that be the thing too though. But one thing I can say, it take you gotta have a you gotta have a partner in crime. 
That's what I love about y'all, man. You man, here we go. Crime, that Taylor, man. right? Taylor, mm. Taylor said the same and thing. I have a partner in crime, and I and I love the fact that I do got a, I got a partner in crime. So now when we do when I'm doing things, I'm more I'm more at ease with it. You know what I'm saying? Like I realized that's what I was missing in yeah. a lot of shit yeah. that I was doing because I didn't have nobody to. To be a be like your peace is a powerful motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you don't really realize how much it is until you actually get it. Yeah, yeah. And then you gotta understand it ain't gonna be always peaches and cream. No, it's, it's gonna be. But it's some uphill battles, but you gotta stick in there. But I always say you have to keep God in the middle of Man. the relationship. Yeah, and that's and that's, that's what important. I'm, and I'm learning that too. That's though. important. So it's like it's like transitioning because when you one of those guys like in the city that you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, and you got your woman that's one of those girls that can any man could could, could shoot at them and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you got to do you can he can shoot at mm -hmm. any woman and y'all both accept like hey man it might be somebody richer might be somebody finer Ooh. whatever but hey it's us and y'all both lock in on that just that statement alone hey man you boy it's got a limit it's a bad shit that's some bad shit though, boy. so with you saying that so cause I know that there be probably females in that inbox and everything <laughs> else like that you know what's so crazy I don't even get that no more you don't I'm so locked in with mine they don't even get it no more and if I do get it it's probably somebody that that, that, that they just out of sight out of mind it's just like like why they looking at like I don't know who this is baby <laughs> it's to the point now it's like I don't know who that is baby alright cool we good cause I know you ain't, you ain't like and it's like if I don't answer the phone it's like I don't care where I'm at that's what I learned too you gotta be you gotta be you gotta respect your 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 your, your, your partner enough where it don't matter what you're doing hey you answering that phone even to say I'll well, yeah, call you right yeah, back yeah. yeah like even just that like just hey man I because you might think I was growing up thinking like, damn, you trying to check up on me, trying to see what I'm, and it's like, shit, hell no, nah, I'm I'm sitting in the bed, and I'm, uh, damn me, I just had a little thought, I'm make sure your ass all right. You. Right. Yeah. And I never thought like that, like, because I was, I was just young and yeah. immature. It, it, take, so. it take growing up and going through some things, mm -hmm. man. We, like I said, tw go coming, we, we got about to hit 20 years here in a little bit, mm -hmm. and we not far from it. And man, that's at, some bad shit, At dog. the end of the day. That's some bad man, shit, no, man. real talk, like, and, but it's God, shit, though, man. you know what I'm saying? Pe people Without don't be, God, it can't happen, bro. Hey, man, people don't be appreciating that shit no more, man. Like, my mom, they, they going on 40, I'll be like. I'd be like, that's a long time. And I know my daddy asshole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know my mama get on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> get yeah. It ain't, easy. it ain't easy. So I, I, I was like, man, but the catch is you got to see it through. No, yeah, it's gonna be yeah. good day, bad day. So it'd be you just got to, you got to sacrifice for each and other. And communication is key too. Man, uh, say, man, you know, it's it's dope, man. When you can, uh, when you can say, hey, man, we we got to do something that's meaningful tonight. I think was a meaningful night for Boss Talk One Hundred One. Nah, for sure, you man. know, because uh, like I said, this was something that had to happen. You know, uh, there's a, there's some that in the city that will be on Boss Talk One Hundred One. We never charge nobody. I always say that. Yeah. Everybody be trying, man. They in the box. Is the inbox full. Inbox is full. <laughs> like how, much, how much for an interview? How much for an and interview? And we never tell you. I'm like, they don't work like that. It comes nah, from here. Sure. It yeah, comes from yeah, here. For sure. You hear what I say? I ain't gonna lie, man. Y'all motivated me to like, you know what I'm saying? Like, step it up. Like, I might need to, I might need to do something, bro. <laughs> we do that to everybody. <laughs> and like, I, I got it. some niggas in the city that I know. I, I make niggas move. I made niggas change their whole format up. I could tell you they blow your mind. And they told me some of like, God dang. Like, it's just the energy and the way we bringing it. I love it. I knew it. I knew it was a next level thing. But we, we believe ain't coming. that everybody can get it. We not competing do whatever you about want to do. And that's what nobody. Nobody can do. That. And we'll make it so player. Is when it's like, man, say this lane so big, it's so exactly. much. Exactly. It's like, man, we doing this for this reason. Y'all might be doing it for that reason, but the catch is y'all reason might not hold up to my reason. I was gonna ask you about something. Y'all just made me think of it before you get off of here. The bloggers, man, that are in the city, they everywhere. Bloggers, uh, everybody. The my boy, shout out to Crisco. Bloggers. I seen you yeah. was on there. Uh, uh, just uh, the different. Uh, not only just I, I all salute, these different platforms. I salute all the platforms. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. And they all predominantly coming out of Dallas. And some of them, you know, I'm taking pictures with people now. She mm -hmm. know that you can't even go to the store. And they're like, man, can we get a picture? Like, because they loving these platforms, bro. What do you think about it? And, and how does it play into the music? Hey, I, it, it's a gift and a curse. Because one thing about it as a DJ, I know, hey, man, if the DJ is not playing your music, you only can go so far. Bottom line. But the bloggers are starting to make the artists feel like, hey, man, if the blogger posts you enough, you're going to be big. And that's not the case. Okay. 
other than that, I love it because you're still giving them an opportunity to reach somebody and be yeah. heard somewhere. So as many bloggers that come out, it's dope. Okay. For the simple fact that, hey, without child, y'all, you you might be this close to helping somebody get to their next point or next goal that they need to reach. So it's dope that the bloggers is it. It just the catch is clickbait is 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 went past the fact of positive enlightenment. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I understand it because that is they turn it into a business, but at the same time, you gotta be stronger. You can't go with the you can't go with the uh the, the goddamn me the the wolf tickets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gotta just you just gotta stick to your roots and, and make you stronger. And a lot of people, they always fall. A lot of bloggers are always gonna fall because it's you need content like that. Negative content draws more inf influence than positive content. And I hate that. That's the law of the, that's the, mm, law of the game. I, I don't think you get around it, though. We found that out the hard way. Like can't. We can't get around it. We yeah. call ourselves, bro. When we started, it was all we trying to do, everything we positive. We trying to be positive. Nigga, nigga. we trying to work, man. Exactly. And then it was all of a sudden like, nigga, did you just say this about him? I can't let you say that and get away with that. I got to bring him on here. Come I'm on, serious. Man. I drove all the way to Houston to go get a nigga on my platform just to make sure he got to say his piece. Come on, man. I'm being real. When you speak over here, I can't let that. That ain't fair. It ain't fair. You ain't, say, <laughs> you ain't, say, you ain't saying nothing. You ain't, man. I know. Did we dig number yeah. three, didn't we? Yeah, we did. But you know what I wanted to say about... And okay, it was... The, go ahead. No, the difference with the music, um, when you go and the DJ plays your music compared to whenever you come on a platform, is that... DJ play music, all you're hearing is music. You fall in love with the music. But when you come to a platform, depends on the platform, because some platforms don't really God ask right. you background and all of that. God you get right. to fall in love with the individuals, because for me, I can love somebody music, but when I meet them in person, I realize that they're just an a Hey, you stop fucking with them. Thank you. Easy, yeah. easy. But and, if I get and, to know you. And, and them platforms give give people a gift and a curse. All right, like, like when we had the podcast, it made people fall in love like that. They didn't hit that crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, okay, hit that. And they got kids, you take care of it. It, 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 it gives, it enlightens people on so much more that make them either fall in love with you or say, fuck you. Right. So it, it, it works in your favor depending on the character that you have within yourself. Exactly. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and you just got to, you, you, you know, you got to make sure that, like we, like when you look at those pictures on the wall, man, the, that that tell me the reason why you know we got so many different people from so many different states from no so many different places coming here being on this platform because mm -hmm. we've yeah. been dealing with all these people the whole time and it don't just it's not just a Dallas thing it comes yeah, full circle are, it's just everybody just like hey eat whatever you need it comes full circle and that's the whole game, man. Thank you for coming on Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk, man. Like I said, Mr. Hit That, we love you. We're glad you came through. No, no doubt. No, 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 no. And this ain't the last time, I know. No, nah, for sure. <laughs> I got to come back and bring y'all some girls. Well, and we're going to okay. have something for you, too. No, for you just sure. got to tell me when we're going to do it and again. And where people can find your gear if they want to buy it. HidalgoUSA.com. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, you can go on the Instagram page, HidalgoUSA. And, you know, Didn't you have your stuff in a store at one time? Yes, one I, time. I got I got my clothes at uh, Athlete's Foot in Lancaster and Athlete's Foot in Fort Worth and all the Athlete's Foot in like the DFW area and Royalty, Royalty DFW. See, I love that. How did you get it into... Um uh, I first started working with Athlete's Foot on some marketing, just helping them do marketing. Okay. And then I, I just cranked up some clothes and they're like, man, put it in a store. And so it's just been rolling ever since. So. That's a That's blessing. Awesome. God yeah. opened doors, no man can shut. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Man, thank you so much, man. Blessing, blessing. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out.